Hi there, and thanks very much for tuning in. My name is Myron Salant, and you're watching another screencast from Mazblog.com. Today's screencast is a tutorial, and in this tutorial, we'll be looking at configuring your Mac for additional users, customizing the dock and background, and also looking at some essential applications to get you going on your way quite quickly, should you be a new Mac user. So let's get into it. Uh, the first thing I'd like to look at is obviously configuring your Mac for new users. And to bring this option up, you're going to go down to the dock, click the system preferences icon over there, and under the system uh, option, you're going to look for the accounts icon and give that a click. Now, as you can see, this brings up the interface for adding new users. There's me, and you can see that I'm the administrator, and I also have a guest account. Now, if I wanted to add a user to the system, I'd click the padlock over there. It would want to authenticate me, so I'd enter my password, and that now unlocks the padlock, and we can go ahead and add users. Before we do that, though, I'd like to have a look at the, uh, the general scenario that you're presented with when you click on a user. Uh, guest is slightly special, and we'll talk about that in another tutorial, but for the sake of the tutorial, let's have a look at the default accounts that Mac asked you to create when you first started up, and that would be the administrator accounts. There's my picture. I can change the password. That's my username. I can configure mobile me, should I have the service, address book card, and I can also enable parental controls, which we'll get into in just a moment. I also have my login items, and these will allow this option will allow me to add applications to open automatically once I log in to the Mac operating system. Let's take a look at uh, adding a new user, and to do that, I'm going to click the plus button at the bottom, and that's going to bring up a, a range of options. The first thing it's going to ask me is what type of account it is. An administrator account, I'd advise against setting this, uh, should there already be an administrator account, which there should be, and this will be the default account that you first create. Standard, which today uh, we'll be using this option. Managed with parental controls, which is great. Uh, parental controls allows you to set time limits on the actual computer for the specific user. Uh, it also allows access to various applications that you can modify. Uh, and various other options which we'll look at in just a moment. Sharing only, if for example I wanted to access my Mac from uh, another PC or another Mac, I'd click this and that would allow remote access to share directories um, that I set, or, or group access. If I was to add a, a specific group, for example kids, I'd add them to this and I can set various options within the group so I don't have to create each account um, on its own with its own preferences. I can have one shared preference. For the sake of today, we're going to go with standard, the name of the actual account, the short name, this will be the actual login name, password, and it'll ask me to verify the password, and a, a password hint. Okay. Turn on file vault protection. If, for example, I wanted to give this user access to encrypt certain things, I'd turn this one on over here. Um, this allows me to encrypt various uh, files or folders, but for today we're going to create a straightforward standard account. I'm going to hit the create button, it's doing its thing, and there we go. It's also placed the default image there for me, I can change that at my leisure, I can reset the password, and I can also add various options to this account. Allow user to administer the computer, not a great idea if you already have the administrator set. Enable parental controls. Let's have a look at this very briefly. So to open that preference, I'm just going to select the account I'd like to, to use. I have the system preferences, simple finder, only allow selected applications, which is uh, quite useful if, for example, I didn't want to give them access to, I don't know, GarageBand, for example, I can deselect it over there. Uh, what type of content I'd allow the user to use mail and I chat, uh, time limits on the computer, and uh, do I want to allow them to log their activities? Always a good idea, especially if uh, the person using this would be a, a child. It's nice to see what they're up to. So for the sake of today, we'll leave things as they are, and obviously what I'm going to do now is remove the user because I don't need this particular user on the uh, computer platform at this stage. So to do that, delete the home folder, that'll remove everything uh, about the user and the system will forget that it was ever there. The next thing I'd like to look at is customizing the dock and background. And to do this, we're going to click the back button over there and under personal options, we're going to have a look at desktop and screensaver. 
So the first thing that it brings up is the uh, the actual desktop background, and uh, Mac OS X is quite clever. It also imports photos uh, that I've added to iPhoto. So I found a really great website, and that website is called interfacelift.com, and this allows me to download HDR photos as well as creative images that people have done, and to give you guys an example, there it is. Um, we're now in space three, as you can see the little icon changed that because I dragged it into the bottom. Uh, but nevertheless, HDR photos all the way forward. It's uh, to give you a brief idea of what it is. It's uh, different exposures in the same photo to create the best colors. And interfacelift.com will allow you to download these types of shots, and it will also allow you to download it in your specific resolution. So a great website and uh, some really really talented people taking photos on there. The next thing I'd like to look at is the screensaver. I by default have mine set on Spectrum, I quite like that. I can also have my iTunes artwork should I wish, uh, the computer name, uh, Flurry, which seems to be quite a popular one, and I can also set the options um, for the for the screensaver should I click the options button, and obviously it will allow me to preview my changes before I do that. The next thing I'd like to look at is customizing the dock and that you'll find again in the personal. I currently have my dock set to a fairly small size, but if I drag that, you'll see it'll stretch in real time to the size of the screen. Uh, also the type of magnification I have set on the icons when I roll over, as you can see it's very minimal or next to none there. And should we go quite big, you can see the change <laughs> straight away. I can also set to where I'd like to place the dock on the, on the system, uh, and that again is quite a straightforward option as you can see over here, and I can also have a look at uh, what type of mag or minimizing effects I'd like to use uh, for the dock. So for example, if I bring up the terminal and minimize it, you can see that the Genie effect gives it uh, some animation, and also when I enlarge the application. If I want a, a very straightforward, non-animatic feature, uh, you can see the difference straight away. doesn't need a lot of exp uh, explaining. Uh, animate opening applications. Obviously, when you open an application, the dock will bounce and automatically hide and show the dock. Again, that's quite straightforward. The last thing I'd like to look at today for this particular tutorial are some essential applications. Uh, and I make use of these on a day-to-day -day basis. And the full list with the corresponding download URLs will be available at masblog.com. And the first thing I'd like to look at is obviously Firefox. Firefox is a great web browser, not to take away from Safari. Safari is very, very speedy. I just happen to like um, Firefox, and that again is a, a complete matter of preference. The next application would be Growl. Growl over here allows us to add notifications to various events taking place in the system, and it's especially useful if you do a lot of things all at once on your, uh, on your particular Mac, and uh, that obviously means if, for example, I'm busy working on a website, uh, for instance, and I'm downloading a file in the background, Growl will pop up over here and give me a visual and audible notification that that file is downloaded. I can then stop editing the website and uh, deal with the file that has just been downloaded. The next thing I'd like to look at is FileZilla. Um, I've just removed it temporarily from my system over here, but I will be reinstalling it shortly. FileZilla is a free FTP client, very useful and uh, extremely easy to use. And uh, I do recommend giving it a bash, at least a test. The next application would be Skype. Um, I don't have Skype added to the dock as of yet, uh, but I will be doing that as soon as I finish the tutorial. And also MSN. MSN is a, uh, a free chat service from Microsoft. A lot of people make use of it, and yes, there is a Mac um, application available for MSN. Again, the list for download URLs will be available on Mazblog. Dot com. So that pretty much concludes our tutorial today. I hope you found it useful. As always, you can download this tutorial to watch at your own leisure uh, in HD from mazblog.com. Thanks as always for tuning in, and I look forward to your comments and suggestions. Take care.